Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Megan Easley Walsh, and this is History Stories. With the PhD in history, as an author, a writing consultant, and editor, my life is full of history and stories. With that in mind, this podcast goal is to explore some of those stories of history. This will include diving into antiques and interesting historical artifacts that I've found, looking behind the scenes at inspiration for my novels, taking a peek at places I visited, and uncovering new topics of interest. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. On my dining room table, I have a teapot. A few years ago, while in County Sligo, I found this teapot at an antique shop. It has orange and blue flowers painted on it, interspersed with gold, all against a white background. The teapot spout has a slight chip, and maybe the tea would spill a bit if you were to use it. This teapot is Victorian. Victorian London is the setting for my novel, The Collectors. In 1872, Amelia inherits a secret. She becomes connected to a secret society with deep roots that are often mysterious. Along the way, there is intrigue, and there are chips, but the integrity of the society remains, just like my teapot. My novel, The Collectors, weaves together a tapestry of characters and experiences as they try to preserve the original meaning behind The Collectors, a society that pledged itself to uphold the light in dark times. Someone is masquerading as a collector when he or she is not. Another member has been forgotten. Now England itself is threatened, and it is up to Amelia to unravel the threads so that the collectors can persevere. Linking tea with stories reminds me of the quotation by C.S. Lewis, quote, you can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me, end quote. The Collectors is not a particularly long novel, but the society within the book does have a long history spanning centuries. A love affair with tea is also something that spans centuries. I wrote about a Victorian tea caddy when tea was locked away because it was so valuable in an earlier episode of History Stories. England, where the collectors is set, is often associated with tea. Did you know, though, that per capita, we drink more tea here in Ireland than anywhere else in the world with the exception of Turkey? According to the German statistics database Statistica, 6.96 pounds of tea per capita was consumed in Turkey in 2016. In the same year, Ireland came in second at 4.83 pounds per capita. The United Kingdom was third at 4.28 pounds per capita. The United States is far down that list at half a pound of tea consumed per capita for the year. Tea also reminds me of this quotation by Eleanor Roosevelt. Quote, A woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong it is until it's in hot water. End quote. Women's strength and the strength of people in general is a topic that I've explored throughout my novels. Sometimes that's a loud strength, as in the French Resistance and my novel Flight Before Dawn. For Amelia and the Collectors, it's a quieter form of strength, one of navigating the shadows to gain greater clarity and hold on to the light. That quiet strength is descriptive of Amelia's ancestry rooted in Quakerism. The Quakers, or Religious Society of Friends, as they are sometimes called, began in the 17th century by George Fox. In the United States, the Quakers were often associated with abolitionists. Quakers also align as conscientious objectors. For some, they choose to refrain from any work associated with war, even tangentially and these are known as absolutists. For others, known as alternativists, they may engage in work to support a war without being involved in fighting, perhaps by farming or driving ambulances. Ideas surrounding aversion to fighting and what it means to hold on to one's morals are considered in the collectors. 
Perhaps the most famous Quaker, at least for an American audience, is William Penn, the founder of the state of Pennsylvania. In William Penn's words, quote, force may subdue, but love gains, end quote. This quotation captures the quiet strength of Quakerism that we spoke about before. But I don't think you have to be a Quaker in order to prefer diplomacy to fighting. We've spoken throughout this podcast about the importance of peace and the responsibility of the historian in educating the wider public so that together we might choose a brighter future. It's a lesson that my characters and the collectors tried to live by. Someone else with Quaker roots was the polar explorer, Ernest Shackleton. He was Irish and led three expeditions to Antarctica in the early part of the 20th century. His ship, the Endurance, famously became trapped in ice in the midst of World War I on the 19th of January, 1915. On the 30th of August, 1916, the final men from Shackleton's expedition were rescued. Thanks to Shackleton's leadership and the teamwork of the crew, all 27 men survived, despite the endurance having sunk in late 1915. Perhaps Shackleton's ancestry contributed to his strength in preserving the life of all of these men. Other explorers pressed to beat records at the time, but Shackleton put his crew first. The crew would, I think, have appreciated some of those warming cups of tea we discussed earlier. In recent history, on March 9, 2022, the Endurance Shipwreck was located. A museum showcasing Shackleton is currently under renovation in County Kildare in Ireland, near where Shackleton was born, and it is hoped to be opened by 2025. Another particularly interesting man on the Endurance was the photographer Frank Hurley. After surviving being trapped in the Antarctic for over a year, he went to the Western Front of World War I to photograph it. Art can bear witness. That may be through photography, that may be through literature. Historians, likewise, seek to capture a snapshot in time, to enliven it, to make it accessible, and then to compose a comprehensive album of understanding. As in my novel, The Collectors, all of us are collecting. Recently, I attended an online discussion via the American Historical Association, of which I'm a member. The talk was given by Harvard professor Charles Meyer. Speaking about his new book, this quotation of his was shared. Quote, History is full of surprises, but the job of historians is to make it less surprising. End quote. A bit like a historian, Amelia and the Collectors, attempts to gather the information of the collector's past to sort through it, analyze it, and make it less surprising for the future. If we remember that we have a collective past, and if we reaffirm protecting our collective future, then the future will surely be brighter. Thank you for joining me for this episode of History Stories. To find out more about my writing and my research, visit me at meganeasleywalsh.com. And you can find my novel, The Collectors, on Amazon. I look forward to sharing more history stories with you in the next episode. <music>